We are all on this journey called life and some of us stumble across yoga along this journey and it improves and maybe even changes the journey. The fact that you are watching this video means that yoga is in some way part of your life and I would like to share just some of my journey starting with how I first stumbled across yoga while in my mother's womb. In case we're meeting for the first time, my name is Yoga Sensei Tawani Clark. So our journeys tend to be intertwined. We all have a journey, but they cross with so many other people's journeys. And a lot of the time, those crossing points with other people is how we come across yoga. Mine, like I guess all of us are intertwined with our mother's journey. But my journey begins with my mom and with my parents. I'm a product of a, you can say, interracial, racial, don't really believe there is race, but intercultural <laughs> relationship. My mother being Zambian and African and my father being European and British. So when they got together, there was comments from both sides, from my dad's side. It was like, how easy is it to get a divorce? And on my mother's side, on the Zambian side, the African side, it was like, we got, we got political independence from, from these uh, people. And uh, now you want to marry one? And you happen to pick one that seems to be broke? And one thing that they both agreed on was, what about the children? People had this notion that biracial or mixed racial children would be, you know, confused and not know where they are or what their place is in the world. So this was the situation my, my mom was, was in and there was a lot of pressure from um, even her classmates as she was at the University of Zambia. It's like, why, why are you going out? with this white, white person? Is it because he has a car? You know, what, what is it? And that started to weigh heavily on her in the pressure and that stress on top of the stress of the rest of life led to her snapping on her one ally who was my dad and she said, you know, I need to do something about this. This is, this is not helping me. And this is when she came across yoga and threw a book and started getting into the breathing exercises of yoga and also into the poses of yoga. So by the time she was pregnant with me, about four years into their marriage, she was doing yoga. So I say that my first connection with yoga was in my mother's womb. And a lot of people do say that babies in the mother's womb make a connection to yoga. They connect to anything and everything that their mothers are doing. Of course, I have no recollection of, of that, nor do I have a recollection of the second time apparently I did yoga when my mother was expecting my sister, who was two years younger than me, I did yoga as a toddler. And I only, it's interesting that I only found out about that about a year ago. When I do first remember doing yoga, which is probably the third time I did yoga, was as a seven-year-old. And it was just fun. It was just like on the sitting room floor, opening this yoga book and trying all these contorted poses. And I never thought anything much other than something interesting to do. And I would randomly pick up this yoga book on and off over the years. The time that I got a little bit deeper into yoga was oh, a good nine years later when I was 16 years old. And I had been a fairly sickly child. I mean, I was the child that was sick at least three times a year, probably because I hated school so much. So like, if I was sick, my dad says, okay, Tony, you don't have to go to school. And I was like, yes. So at least three times a year, or at least once a term, I was sick. But when I was 16 and I knew I was in my final year of secondary school, some people call it high school, I came down with hepatitis, which is a infection of the liver caused by a, a virus. Now, 
if you know anything about that disease, the liver is really highly involved in the breakdown of proteins and fats. So I couldn't stand the smell of, of, of meat. If I smelt meat or animal fat, I would, I would start to, to retch. And even after I had recovered, I was you know, pretty much bedridden for about a month. Even when I recovered, I didn't want to have anything to do with meat whatsoever. And I then started this research because I was pressured into eating meat because it's like, yeah, 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 you need the protein, you're, you're going to stop growing. I always remind my mom that I was 16, I actually stopped growing at 14. But anyways, that's, that's your mother for you. And I was very fortunate that my parents at that time were both working at the University of Zambia, pretty much the only university in the country at the time. And I had access to the whole of the university library we had no google in 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 those days Dish dating myself a little bit but there and what i found from my research was four things about being vegetarian firstly that it is healthier people who eat meat are more likely to get cancers particularly the reproductive cancers and more than anything the colon cancer and we know very re recently that chadwick bossman who played um king tajala in the Black Panther died of colon cancer. The second thing is it is kinder to animals. We don't actually need to eat um, uh, meat, unlike a lion who needs to survive on meat. So the third thing I realized that it, it is adapted to probably who we are genetically and what we're looking at, what our teeth are designed to eat and what our digestive system is likely better and find easier to digest. And if you just look at our closest living relatives in terms of the apes and the monkeys, we'll find that they eat uh, a lot of fruit and roots and leaves. And that's more likely what we are likely to eat. So that was the third reason. The fourth reason is I saw that we would definitely be kinder with the environment if we ate um, more vegetables. Mm -hmm. And in all of this, it was yoga. It was yoga that gave me permission to be vegetarian, that supported the choice to be vegetarian. And I found myself now doing yoga again from books and random, the doing it. I had no teacher. And because I had no teacher at the time, I, I guess I lost momentum. I got back into current and I fell out of yoga. So you can see how yoga came in and out of my life so many times. There were so many crossing points between me and yoga, but each highly significant.